Hello everyone, this is Independent Conservative. I am Ryan Bowling. Thank you all for joining me once again. Uh, I want to, to do a special appreciation for the men and women who have given their lives for this country. Of course, we know today is Memorial's Day and it is a day that is a solemn day. It's not really a celebratory day. It's, it's, we're, you know, we're not celebrating necessarily, but we are honoring and recognizing and remembering the sacrifices of the men and women who have died on the battlefield in the military, who have sacrificed their lives for the freedoms that we enjoy each and every day. So I wanted to do this video to recognize their services. Now, in addition to that, I want to also recognize those soldiers who are alive today who are also serving. Now, I know that it's not the same because they have not necessarily sacrificed their lives at this point. That would be more or less a Veterans Day where we recognize the services of those living soldiers that are, sac that are basically serving our country in the here and now. But I also want to recognize, but I want to recognize them as well, because in a sense, they are sacrificing something. They're sacrificing their time. They may not have sacrificed their lives at this point, but they're sacrificing their time and they're putting their lives on hold because the possibility of them dying on the battlefield is very, very high. And because of that, I honor you as well. Now, if you guys notice in the back of me, usually I'll, I have a display of books and show, showcasing uh, the books that I have and so forth. And if you notice in the back that the books are turned to the back, if you notice, they're all, turn, all turned to the back. And there's a reason for that. And the reason specifically is this, because this is Memorial's Day, because this is a day that we are to recognize the sacrifices the lives of those who have, have who have uh, have served our country and have went, have taken the ultimate sacrifice, which is to die on the battlefield. Because this is a day that we recognize these individuals, these men and women. I didn't want our focus to be on anything other than that. Okay, so that's why I have everything facing backwards. I, I want everything to be focused on these men and women who have given their lives for our country. Now, I will mention this, though. Something else that I want to mention on the side of Memorial's Day, and that is in reference to the protesters of the Vietnam War and the protesters of today, the Hamas protesters. Now, recently, for the last few days, I have been watching a documentary series on the History Channel in reference to Vietnam. Now, I've, I've seen many documentaries on Vietnam before. I've seen one particular documentary uh, about Vietnam uh, from Ken Burns, the documentary uh, filmmaker. Awesome documentary filmmaker, man. This guy's, his, his documentaries are top notch. And uh, so I've seen many different documentaries on uh, Vietnam. But recently, I've been watching for the last few days a documentary on, on the uh, war in Vietnam uh, from the History Channel. And there was a particular segment that, I, that, that, that really caught my attention. And I don't think Ken Burns mentioned this in his documentary, but it's in reference to the protesters of the Vietnam War and how many of the soldiers would come back, those that had lived, had survived, would come back to America and would be ostracized and called all kinds of bad names and rejected and blamed for everything, you know. And uh, what was going on, as most of us understand about the Vietnam War, was at one point when the Vietnam War first started in the mid-1960s, there was this considerable amount of American uh, support from the American public. But as time went on and, and the people began to wonder what was the real purpose for the Vietnam War? Since in most wars, particularly World War II and others, 
It was always about the obtaining and taking over of territory. Once you gain a particular territory, you took it over and then you moved forward, forward to take over more territory. Whereas the Vietnam War wasn't about the gaining of territory. It was all about body counts. Whoever had the most, whoever killed the most soldiers, that, that, that showed you the victory. However, it wasn't a real clear objective. And it not only frustrated the soldiers, but it frustrated the American public. And the American public began to become more and more incensed against the Vietnam War. It got to the point where there was intensive and sometimes violent protests against the war. And as I said, it got to the point where the soldiers, when those who had survived, when they would come back from the war, they will be ostracized and called all kinds of names. One particular man, and you're going to know what I'm talking about when I get through this. One particular uh, soldier, he said that uh, he didn't want to go to the war, but he, he, he I think he, he was drafted. No, no, I'm, let me take that back. He wasn't drafted. He volunteered. He volunteered to go and because um, all of his friends were, were, were going and he felt guilty that he was enjoying all these freedoms. So he decided to go ahead and uh, volunteer his time. He survived and he had all these medals and so forth. He had become a sergeant. He had all these, these medals. He had all this recognition. He was feeling real proud. And he gets off the plane and he's thinking that he's going to get a warm welcome from all the people. And he said they, they called him all. It was just terrible. They just ostracized him and called him all kinds of names and all the rest to the point where this man started crying. And he said what I should have been proud of. I was ashamed of. And he said when he got home, he went and put everything away. And it broke my heart to see that because it my my, my I got to thinking, as sincere as a lot of these so-called protesters were during the Vietnam War, and I'm gonna show you. Okay. A lot of those people that was protesting during the Vietnam War, most of them were, were younger people. OK, in their early 20s and so forth, that had no full understanding of what it was all about, what they were being told by the mainstream media and others, or at least what they were observing was this idea that the soldiers were going over there, was, was just over there raping and killing innocent Vietnamese and villagers and farmers and just killing them up and raping people and so forth. And this was the imagery that a lot of these protesters were seeing in the media, that nasty thing called the media. The mainstream media. This is what they were seeing. And this is what was pumping their heads. Full of misguided understandings and lies. So when they would protest. Their protest was one of anger and resentment and bitterness. <clears throat> that they had took out on the soldiers. Who was coming home. Who had survived. But that was a misguided understanding of the war. Because even though. But even though there was no clear objectives in terms of what a lot of the soldiers were dealing with, a lot of them was frustrated because they didn't know what what were, what what were we what footing footing were we gaining, okay? They put their lives on the line, and to come home to protesters calling them baby killers and and rapists and all this other kind of crazy stuff was just insane. Now, why am I talking about this? Because it bothered me personally. Okay. It bothers me personally to see these young people being manipulated by forces outside themselves. They may be sincere, but the forces outside of them that are indoctrinating them are not sincere. They are trying their best to cause division. And in, in some sources state, that many of those protesters or protest groups in the Vietnam War were infiltrated by communists and Marxists. Whoop, there we go with the communists again. You know they're all about division. Now, let's move forward to 2024. The Hamas protesters, another group of ignorant people. The Hamas protesters, yipping and yapping, hooping and hollering, causing all kinds of damage causing all kinds of chaos in college campuses and universities all over the country. Why? Because they have little or no understanding of what they're even protesting about. But because their minds are young 
and vulnerable and filled with nonsense by outside forces such as Marxists and communists and progressive Democrats pumping their head full of nonsense, they think they're doing the right thing. And it's a crying shame when we live in a society so full of dumbed down young people who are protesting about stuff they have no clue that they're protesting about. It happened during the Vietnam War and it's happening now. And that's one of the things I wanted to mention in lieu of recognizing and honoring the sacrifices that many of our men and women soldiers have done on the battlefield by giving their lives for this country. I wanted to bring that out because it, it has to stop, really. It puts a stain on the men and women who sacrifice their lives for the constitution of this country. And let me tell you, I said the constitution. I'm not talking about the politicians. I can't stand them on both sides. They get in office, they yick and yak, give us rhetoric, spit and spat, make us woo-wee, ah, woo, rah, 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 get in office and do the complete opposite of what we want, both Democrat and Republican. I can't stand them. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the Constitution. From what I understand, when they, when them soldiers pledge allegiance, they're talking about, they pledge allegiance to the Constitution to protect the Constitution of this country. Something that these politicians don't give a D-A-M-N about. So I could care less about what happens to them. I don't give them any honor. I may respect their position, but I don't respect them because they're not respectable. They're not decent human beings. But the Constitution, that our soldiers in the Vietnam War and even now are striving to protect, I honor and salute you. Okay? I honor and salute you. And I do, you know? And I think that that's how, how it should be. But once again, we got corruption in our mainstream media, corruption in our in politics, corruption in the schools, corruption in our films, corruption in our music, corruption even in religion. And people don't know where to go. I'll tell you where to go, though, in my opinion. To end the video on this, go to Jesus Christ. I know I'm preaching, but that's, I'm just giving you my personal belief. Jesus Christ is the answer. The word of God, the Bible is the answer. The way I see it, okay? I'm just giving you my belief, okay? People can go to other different ways to give them peace and joy. What gives me peace and joy and stability in such messed up, chaotic times is my relationship with Jesus Christ and his word, which I believe is the Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That's, I'm just giving you, that's, that's, that's what I see, okay? Yeah, but I wanted to do this special video to honor and recognize the sacrifices of the men and women who have put their lives on the line and have given their lives for this great country. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that once again, I honor each and every one of you who may be watching this video that may be currently enlisted in the military. I honor you guys for putting your life on the hold and putting yourself out there and basically sacrificing your life because you know the potential for your life to be taken is there. So I honor you and salute you as well. So God bless you all. What do you guys think? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel. God bless you all and see you again.